The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship today. Hope everybody was able to find a seat okay. And it's good to be together at the time of worship. Last couple Sundays I've suggested that those of you in the back, being very good Lutherans, might want to move up. As you do get seated, think about that next Sunday because we'll sound better up closer together as a family of faith. Uh, welcome again to worship this morning as the seventh Sunday of Pentecost and the Spirit of God working in with and through us and we gather for worship today. Just a reminder, those red pew pads are there in the center aisle somewhere. If you would sign in, please, we'd appreciate that. And then thanks to Amanda for running our Facebook today and we say good morning to our Facebook family of faith uh, watching online. Last week, the noisy offering raised over $250. So just a thank you for those that were able to participate. If you weren't here or weren't able, uh, you can still give some noise <laughs> uh, to the Shepherd's Fund, if you'd like, that helps our uh, internal uh, folks that are in need. The Shepherd's Fund, uh, we got about 250 for the uh, for the noisy offering last week. Thank you to those who were able to donate. This coming Saturday will be close Closet once again. Pat's here today if you would like to speak with her or there's a sign-up sheet. If you can help from 10 to 12 on Saturday for the closed closet. And certainly if you run into anybody, you know somebody who knows somebody who might be in need for clothes or whatever, please by all means invite them to come uh, Saturday morning to be with us. Next Sunday, Jan wanted me to announce that the mat making will continue after services next Sunday. If you'd like to help out making some mats, folding some bags, some food and fellowship is going to be served. So that's very good. That's in our Lutheran handbook, feed them, they will come. So next Sunday, stay after and help fold mats and things with the rest of the group. And then lastly, just for today is to remind you that July 30th in two weeks, we have a 10 a.m. service, a joint worship service with our family of faith at Faith. So we won't be here on the 30th. We'll be at 10 o'clock over at Faith Lutheran. Please come, make that big 15 minute drive and enjoy your family of faith at Faith. And then in the fall, in October, we will host a joint worship service for them to come here for the chili cook-off that was really popular last year. So the joint councils have decided we'll do these two joint fellowship events in the, in the spring or summer uh, at Faith and then in the fall here at St. Andrews so that we kind of share the wealth, if you will. So that's on the 30th at 10 a.m. With that said and shared, let's just take a moment to take a deep breath and Feel the presence of the Spirit uh, in our lives today. Please stand as you're able for our confession and notice how it's titled there, Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The good news this morning, my brothers and sisters, beloved in Christ, God's justice, mercy, and grace stretch beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our gathering song, O Spirit of Life, the Blue Hymnal 680.
Amen. You sound so beautiful today as we give praise to God. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it. And then grow in faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading is in Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. God is speaking to Israel's exiles. <clears throat> For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace, the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next, we read all of the hymn song, um, 65, responsibly. <laughs> you are to be praised, O God in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are those who choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. For the second reading, Paul writes in Romans 8, verses 1 through 11, of life through the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, 
weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Friends, it's the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and he sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him. He got into a boat and he sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who can hear listen. Hear then the parable of the sower as Jesus explains. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root and endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke that word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another 30. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Amen. You may be seated. I believe Miss Paula will host uh, the children we see today. Come on up.
Thank God for the Hermerdings. We say children of God, as you know, any of you can come forward if you like. Well, good morning. Good to see you again. It's been a while. Well, does anyone know what this is? You recognize that, Lexi? You recognize it too? This is a very famous statue in the harbor near New York City right next to another island called Ellis Island. This has been welcoming people to New York City for I don't know how long. Uh, very often the immigrants that come in on boat would go to Ellis Island right by the Statue of Liberty. This would probably be the, one of the first things they saw of the United States. And they would, they would be so happy to see it because it's a sign of welcome, it's a sign of freedom. It even has a plaque on the inside welcoming people who are tired and weary and are seeking freedom, yearning to be free. Uh, some of my relatives came in through Ellis Island and this is probably one of the first things they saw. Then from there, they, they came from Germany, they came over and settled in Indiana. Some of them settled in, uh, in St. Louis. But anyway, the, the people that came to Ellis Island and saw this welcoming Statue of Liberty some of them, when they got to Ellis Island, they were turned back. They were turned back for maybe reasons that um, some of them were sick, and sick people were not allowed in the United States. Some of them, when they came and got past Ellis Island, found that they, the people in the United States did not always welcome them. They were afraid of newcomers, people that were different from them. But that's not what Jesus wants, right? He doesn't want us to be scared and turn people back just because they're a little different. Um, sometimes uh, people, who, oh, another, another one. We've got another little baby, little visitor here. It's good to see you. Can you, can you tell me what your name is? Name? Go oh, Kimber, of course, Kimber, there you are. I'm glad you're all four here. You know what, I thought this was Kimber at first. She's gotten so big. Anyway, when Jesus was here on earth, and now that he's in heaven with his father, he welcomed everybody. He welcomed people that other people didn't like too much. He loved children at a time when children were not particularly valued by society. He welcomed tax collectors. He welcomed people who mm, had a kind of a shady background. And that's what he tells us to do. When people come into church, when people come in our lives, let's welcome them. I'm going to give the kids this coloring page. It says, all are welcome. So can you take this, take it home, have some fun with them? And remember that all are welcome in our church. Can you take those? And you can give them up, okay? Thank you. Let's hear it for the kids, everybody. Yay! Yay. Thank you for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Paula. All are welcomed. A beautiful way to get started today. We're continuing with our neighbor's faith, <clears throat> excuse me, in the summer sermon series. Today it's Jehovah Witness. If you had been paying any attention to the original schedule, we were going to look at the Hindu faith tradition today, but I just took a little look at it in reviewing it earlier in the week, and I can't give it justice in the time in the sermon. It's very, the Hindu faith tradition, with all due respect, is complex, multi-layered, and would take a lot of time to give it justice. So I thought about Jehovah Witness as God led in, in thinking about what we could talk about today. I've encountered them in my neighborhoods where I've lived in the past, and maybe some of you have as well. The, Je the Jehovah Witness, or Jehovah's Witnesses, they're both plural, 
believe that they are called upon to witness to Jehovah, God, and that they are the ones that really have it right, that they understand this Bible and this understanding of God, and that they're to go out and be the witnesses uh, of God. They accept the entire Bible as the word of God and their belief in it, and they believe that they're the only Christians who have this worldview, if you will. They don't have any clergy. Every Jehovah Witness is a minister, is considered a minister, with a responsibility in Jehovah's Witness to spread the good news of God's kingdom and to witness to God. I think in similar ways we can relate to that. We're also called to be witnesses of God's love out in the world uh, and to welcome one another and love and serve. Uh, So Jehovah's Witnesses study the Bible to learn God's will, uh, to live with it, to make a personal commitment to God through personal, private prayer. Then as a symbol of this dedication, they are fully baptized and commissioned to do his will And then there is an expectation that they give 15 hours a month to the witnessing uh, of God's love and grace. A group of Jehovah's Witnesses called Pioneers commit to give 70 hours a month in witnessing. They go and do house-to-house preaching. That's considered Christ-like method of evangelism. Men and women do this. They go door-to-door. They use Bibles uh, to speak with people. They give out literature containing Bible-based articles and items of current interest, and their goal is to help uh, one to know Jesus and then to follow uh, in his guides and his laws and commandments and so forth. Jehovah's Witnesses gather in private homes, uh, or they have modest auditoriums called kingdom halls. There are three uh, that I could see on the the internet, uh, kingdom halls in the Indianapolis area, They are fulfilling their main purpose, they find, and that is to advertise God's kingdom. Their congregations are kept small as they manage themselves. They have over 2,000 congregations around the world and about over almost 900 of these kingdom halls. They work to be separated from the world, separated from the world. Witnesses are required to adhere to strict moral codes. Just like all of us, no premarital sex, no homosexuality, no gender changes, no adultery, no smoking, no drunkenness, no drugs, no abuse, and they don't do blood transfusions either. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses teach uh, the present world order uh, they believe is ruled by Satan and that uh, it would all be ended when, when Jehovah returns Uh, God and Jesus Christ to fully establish his heavenly government and kingdom on earth. The congregations are kept small, as I said. When they get to about 200 people, they form two congregations out of that. They schedule about five meetings each week that include instruction in the Bible, uh, doctrine of their beliefs, and public speaking. If you don't live up to these basic beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses or to this code of behavior, then you could be disfellowshipped, disfellowshipped out of the, uh, out of the congregation. They have adopted Isaiah 43, which says, you are to be my witnesses. And their first Watchtower magazine, which is the name of their publication, Watchtower, was published in 1878 by a man named Charles Russell, He was the first president of the Watchtower Society, who was a lay person who gathered people together for Bible study and is seen to be the one who kind of founded the Jehovah's Witness uh, faith tradition. They have a doctrine on the coming rule of God's kingdom over the earth with Jesus Christ as the heavenly king, as I mentioned. Jehovah's Witnesses believe in accurate knowledge about about God, and that's why they find it essential to print and distribute Bibles, Bible literature, internationally they do this, and their Watchtower magazine has a circulation of over 22 million in 130 languages. And that is pretty incredible outreach for Jehovah's Witnesses. In the uh, midweek moment that I gave this past Wednesday on the video, I mentioned that 
I had encountered them dressed as men dressed in white shirts and black ties on bicycles. And it was pointed out to me by a friend of a friend who is a Jehovah Witness. That's not how they do it. That's the Mormons. And I got that confused. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses are men and women, both, who will come out and go door to door. Now, they don't do that quite as much anymore because of the way the culture has changed and in this post-pandemic world. But they still believe that they're, they are called, if you will, to witness to Jehovah, very simply put. And they believe that they have the right understanding and it's their duty to give that out, to talk to others about that, to encourage us to follow Jesus and the teachings. And they believe that then it's their duty to print their Bibles, their literature, their material for uh, all of us to have. They hold their allegiance as to God first. They maintain a strict political neutrality. They do not bear arms in warfare. They don't participate in uh, political affairs. They would not salute uh, our American flag or any flag because they see that as idolatry and worship of that flag or that country represented by the flag and not God. So they don't do any of that. And they would agree, my friends, I think, in the idea of Jesus today in the gospel about being seed planters. They are out planting seed about the hope that's in Jesus, the grace and the love and so forth. They do it in their particular way. And friends, we are called to do it ourselves, to be seed planters. And you and I can't always know uh, how the garden is going to produce when we plant seeds in one another. To share God's love, to be welcoming, loving, and caring, to reach out to one another in all those ways that Jesus calls us to be seed planters uh, today. We're all called to plant. We just don't know how the harvest is necessarily going to come out. And so just a little bit about Jehovah's Witness. I have a sheet out on the table that has more information. Those are getting posted on the website if you'd like to follow some of the other faith traditions or, or look this one up later. Uh, in conclusion, here's their prayer that they would pray when they gathered. A Jehovah's Witness prayer. Lord, I pray for myself and for all of us to share your word. Give us the boldness today to speak forth the mystery of Christ. And I pray that when you do, you will make it clear exactly what we should say and how we should say it. One more time, a Jehovah's Witness prayer. Lord, I pray for myself and for all of us to share your word. Give us the boldness today to speak forth the mystery of Christ. And I pray that when you do, you will make it clear exactly what we should say and how we should say it. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, let our hearts be good soil. It's uh, the Blue Hymnal 713. Let's sing it through twice today. Please stand as you're able.
Friends, let us confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and our concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O Lord. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O Lord. Heal those who are sick, O God. We especially pray for Suzanne DeBoer, Al Schott, Belinda Jar Jarbo, Mark Lawler, Bobby Moore, John Moore, Bob Schaber, Dennis and Crystal Wall, Dale Women, Brenda and Don Pett, Parrot and family, and all those we name before you in our hearts. Guide health care workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O oh God. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O oh God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany all visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us to living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. With we'll turn and share that peace one with another. Friends, you may be seated for the offertory. We give thanks to God for the offerings, and we have those a plate at the door if you have something to donate today. Let's sing the offertory.
God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, and it's our joy and our duty that at all times and all places we give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this all to remember me. Remembering our Lord, let us pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. You may be seated. of Christ is given for you.
Before I continue on, I just want to say, don't forget Holy Communion is symbolic. We're aware that the wafers are tasting stale the last couple of weeks. That is not how Jesus is. Jesus is new and fresh and alive. This is a symbolic matter and orders are placed to renew our wafers and refresh in our wine and grape juice. Uh, having said that now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Please stand as you're able. generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Great hymn to send us on our way. Go in peace, share the harvest. Guided by the Spirit, we share the love of Jesus and walk with our community. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 